The abuse case against Minnesota Vikings player Adrian Peterson has raised a lot of questions, particularly about child discipline. When does spanking cross the line and become child abuse? Joining me right now in studio to talk about this very important issue is psychologist Eric Fisher and former prosecutor Tanya Miller. Um, so Eric, to you first, you know, how is it that we've come to this point where it seems that the definition of discipline varies from family to family right. and now versus a, quite a few years ago, maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago, the law steps in and says, I don't know if we necessarily agree with how you discipline your kid. Well, I think we have to look at a whole range of issues and, you know, which would really take time to go through the history of that. However, what I always back up to is the word discipline is often seen as equated with punishment. And the word discipline comes from the word disciple, which means to teach. Mm -hmm. And I think if we look at what we're trying to do with our children is we're trying to teach them, prepare them for the rest of their life. And while we look at that often parenting and discipline, which was, you know, had to do with spanking and which would become abuse, had such a wide range. And we looked at children's rights. Children were often looked at more as a piece of property. Mm -hmm. Now they're looked to me and I think we have to look at them as a gift. And this is an opportunity to raise a child to move into their generation of adulthood mm -hmm. to understand values and morals mm -hmm. and respect. And I just don't think we do that through physical discipline myself. So, uh, you know, a parent feels like one of their biggest jobs is to teach, as you put it, you know, or to, you know, draw the line. But at what point is one family's choice of how they do that um, too much? I mean, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, and who and when should anyone be stepping in? Well, you know, that's that's like the million dollar question, Fred. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, parents do legally have the right to use corporal punishment on their children. Um, the question becomes when that corporal punishment is deemed unreasonable under the law. Have and you who gone makes that too decision? far? It's, it's sometimes police officers that show up on the scene if they've been called by a teacher because the child presents at school with marks or someone calls 911, a neighbor. The officer has to sort of make the initial call based on the facts, mm -hmm. but ultimately it's it's the prosecutor. It's the person who, who makes that decision about who to charge and who not to charge. It's and there are all kinds of factors that the prosecutor is going to look at. So in the case of, say, Peterson, he says, listen, you know, I'm just doing what my family did with me. And while he admits there were markings on his child, you know, as a result of, you know, this discipline, uh, in his view, his defense is, I don't see this as being any different from what I endured as a kid. And uh, as a kid, and there are others who come to his defense who say, you know, I wouldn't be who I am today if not for, you know, that kind of discipline imposed. So, is it an issue of evolution? It may have been acceptable years ago. It is not today. Or is it an issue of, you know, we're in a day and age of uh, photographs and, and video that's a lot more compelling than the spoken word? I think, I think there's sort of two ways to look at it. There's sort of cultural mm -hmm. evolution. There's sort of whether or not that, that sort of defense that Peterson is putting forward culturally makes sense. As a matter of law, it doesn't. You cannot simply say, well, this is the way my mom raised me, therefore that's the way I'm raising my son. As a matter of law, it can't be child abuse. That's not the standard. The standard is whether or not what you did to that child mm -hmm. can be considered excessive, excessively cruel, mm -hmm. and to have caused that child excessive pain. And I do think that Peterson's case really crosses that line. And we can't conflate this issue of, of Peterson and abuse with whether or not spanking is reasonable and appropriate and if there is some room on the mm -hmm. parenting spectrum for, for spanking. Mm -hmm. That's a larger debate. The law really can't join in on that debate. We're, we're a little bit mm -hmm. more um, constrained in terms of what we can say is abuse and is not abuse. And Erica, as we talk about evolution, there's mm -hmm. been an evolution in everything. I mean, Absolutely. we were kids who sat in the back seat of our cars without, without seat you know, seat belts, et cetera. <laughs> right. Studies, right. you know, said now if you have some kind of, you know, restraint, car mm -hmm. restraints, your mm -hmm. life is better protected. Right. And mm -hmm. so the same can be applied to this psychology or this method of discipline. There are studies right. that say there is mental and physical mm -hmm. suffering that comes from corporal punishment. So, right. you know, how, how does anyone make a reason or, you know, digest this, especially well, if they want to, you know, recall family history as right. opposed to referring to new studies? Well, I think not only do we have to look at the scars of physical discipline, but often the scars of emotional abuse and, and can be more severe that we have to pay attention to. However, 2,000 years ago, 
our world evolved. Because when we look at the phrase, spare the rod, spoil the child, is a derivation of a phrase from Proverbs that was written, put together by King Solomon. King Solomon was an extremely punitive father, and they felt that that was some of his beliefs he imparted in the book of Proverbs that became part of the Old Testament. His son Rehoboam was extremely um, abusive to his subjects and actually had to escape assassination a few times because he basically took what his dad did to him and passed it on down. When, when the New Testament was written, Jesus never talked about spanking your children. He never, he said, love thyself, as, you know, love thy neighbor as thyself, do unto others as you have them do unto you. When I talk about parenting in my parenting book, I revert back to equity-based models of parenting that we want to teach our kids a love-based respect, not a fear-based respect. And time and time again, when I have kids and parents and families... Because you heard come, from the one child in that piece that mm -hmm. Gary Tuckman brought, and the little girl said, you know, well, I try really hard not to do anything so as to get, you know, a whooping or a spanking, and the mom even said, you know what, um, these children are very intelligent and so they know right from wrong. But you can do that with a, with a timeout or response cost or writing essays, other ways that teach them not to use power over people mm -hmm. to get control. Mm -hmm. I believe in teaching people to have power with people, to understand that I want to learn to respect others for who they are, not respect them because mm -hmm. they can hurt me. And that's what I feel concerned that mm -hmm. kids learn through this. And mm -hmm. if parents spent more time parenting and really being present with their kids and forming solid mm -hmm. attachments, we wouldn't have these issues. I see the difference between parents don't spend as much quality time with their kids, and that could be the confounding variable, not that they don't mm. spank their kids. And so I think we have to look at a qualitative issue. So still issue. a persistent conflict is going to be balancing you know, philosophical differences mm -hmm. with what the law expects or what the law is able to enforce? Right. I mean, listen, in my own experience, my mother raised me. She did not spank me. She didn't believe in spanking. She grew up in the South in the 50s and 60s with a, a mother who did believe in it and who, who enforced her uh, her rule by using that kind of punishment. My mother came out okay, but I came out okay too. And ultimately, I think that the time that my grandmother was parenting in versus the time that my mother was parenting in versus the time that I'm now parenting in has changed. And I do think that, you know, there is this, 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 this notion of evolution and this notion that we can change and we can do things differently. The law might not be able to enforce that, but I think that culturally and as a society, discussions like this, um, people being open to the possibility that there is another way to do it could very well lead to that evolution. All right, Tanya Miller, Eric Fisher, good to see both of you. Thank you good so much. Here. It is a conversation that uh